Okay, high octane for your super mama brain. Yeah, everything you need to know for dummies before you're buying a house, especially first time home buyers. People like me who are completely oblivious to the nuances of home buying. So I am uh, Garth Haslam, the home medic, and you are Holly Gagan, AKA super mom. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, everything that everybody else does wrong, you have figured out. So that's of course why we, uh, why we had you on here. Yeah, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna say that. We're gonna go with that. That sounds great. Yeah. Okay. Tell me tell me what you've heard thus far. Let's start with that. Well, actually, um, that's actually a good question. I was looking at my husband and I are trying to get our first home, and I saw one a block from where I'm living now, and oh. got all excited because it was like the neighborhood we wanted and oh. everything. And I called the uh, the number on the sign. You saw a home. I did. I saw it home once. I did. Was it was it for sale? It was actually. I probably should have specified. Bonus. <laughs> yes, it was a home for sale. Uh -huh. Just wandering these people's houses. <laughs> hey, I like <laughs> this home. Will you move out? Like I decided, I would like to be here. You can move <laughs> um, no, it was a home that was for sale. Uh -huh. It was like a block from where we're living now. It was. It was a really, really cute house. It was literally across the street from the church that we currently attend. Uh -huh. So we could have left at the same time we leave now and be slightly less late. Slightly than less. The time we leave now. Um, and I, I just thought, you know, I'll just call and see. And it was over our budget. Um, but he mentioned a couple of things that kind of got me thinking about maybe the budget was a little high. Or not maybe the budget. I'm sorry. Maybe the price of the home was a little high uh -huh. because he mentioned it was built in the 30s. Oh, okay. And my first thought was no, 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 because that means bad pipes. That means lead. That means you know asbestos. That means bad insulation. That means bad wiring. That means bad plumbing. That means you know all of these different things popped into my mind mm -hmm. about buying an old home. Right. That scared me. Because I'm fine with a fixer-upper, but I don't want a money pit. Oh, so, and uh, yeah, th that gets into the discussion of what's the difference between a fixer-upper and a money pit. Which I think is a very good topic for another video. <laughs> um, but I did, um, I was watching, um, there are some other videos that you introduced me to. It's homemedicce.com. It's actually um, CE courses for realtors. Right. But when I was watching them, it mentioned lead as generally something you find in homes built before the 70s but i wanted to know more about it so homemedicce.com is for realtors and you as the homeowner can uh, can go there and um, for now at least the price tag on those is free so if you want more information about lead or whatever else you can you can get more into depth there but i but i did notice that what you shared was geared toward realtors, which is great, but I'm not a realtor. Right. So I found myself asking more questions. Okay, first of all, where does it come from? Is it in the pipes? Is it in the paint? Is it in the window frame? I mean, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, should we dig into that? Let's. Okay, so there's um, yeah, a home built in 1930. That's nearly a century old. And it will have some issues. And as the home inspector, I still do that. I, uh, I find that um, you know, older homes generally have subst substantive issues, big issues. Uh, they will also have um, lead. Where and, do you find it though? But uh, that's not always the biggest issue in, in those older homes. Okay. Where do you find it? Uh, Oh, I've got some stories. <laughs> I'm sure you do. <laughs> <laughs> Generally, where do you find it? <laughs> As a home buyer, <laughs> I need to look for it. <laughs> uh, in the paint. In the paint, okay. So there's, uh, there's a couple of things you want to be aware of. Okay. First off is, is that uh, paint, lead-based paint was used until about 1978 when they decided that it was unsafe, so they banned it. Banned meaning they stopped manufacturing it, which doesn't mean that uh, Grandpa didn't store it for a year or two and then still pull it out and use it. Or so. that the paint color has been there for the last decade and it's fine. Right. So, 
so yeah, Grandpa may have painted in 1978. He may have painted in 1980. Um, and then you're going to have that lead there, which when it uh, peels off, and then um, what's the name of your fictional daughter? We're not going to use your real one. I call her Boo Boo. Boo Boo. When That's Boo -boo, an actual nickname. <laughs> Maybe we should call her something different. <laughs> we'll call her Boo Boo. That's Boo -boo. awesome. That's, that's great. That's... Okay. So when she uh, is uh, hanging around that lead-based paint, she's going to go, oh, lead-based paint. I think I'll eat this. Yeah. That is actually something she would do. Yeah? Yeah. And, um, and then she eats that and, uh, you know, doctors and medical professionals are unclear, are unclear on how much of that needs to be eaten for there to be damage. And of course that's going to vary from one person to another. So if you ask how much lead-based paint do I need to eat in order to be damaged, nobody will give you that answer. Probably you shouldn't be eating paint to begin with, <laughs> yeah. but children can't always be counted on. <laughs> So if you, uh, if you go to the internet where all things are truth, sure, sure. Uh, you can get any, kind, any number of answers and you know, it'll, it'll cause everything from, uh, from brain damage to emphysema. Um, but the training that I got from somebody who knew what he was talking about is that uh, it will cause, uh, it will inhibit brain development in unborns and newborns. So if you are or could become soon pregnant, or if your child under, say, five years old is eating this stuff, there can be brain damage. Okay. For me, I'm not going to become pregnant anytime soon. Medical and, marvel. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Pretty sure of that. So I can eat all the lead-based paint that I want. Good to know. I can put it on the salad. I can flavor my meat, my my uh, my steak with it. It's uh, scratch a little off the walls. Yeah, here. it's it's a beautiful thing. So, <laughs> one of my stories is one of my daughters. Um, she got she went outside and she was I don't know I'm going to say about uh, a little over a year old at the time. Okay. And er I was working on the yard and she every time I turned my back she would just shovel as much dirt into her mouth as she could get. And then, of course, you know, I tried to get it out of her mouth as much as possible, but there it was in her diapers. Kids are so awesome. <laughs> <laughs> so, in that particular neighborhood, uh, lead-based paint wasn't a problem because it was a brand new neighborhood and it had never been anything except for sagebrush until that time. So, I knew that we didn't have a lead-based paint problem. You know, whatever else is in the soil, that's true. Okay, so then the lead-based paint, that actually kind of brings up another question. Mm -hmm. Is it better than, or what are the pros and cons of leaving it there mm -hmm. and just assuming the second it starts to peel, you need to take care of it? Or if you suspect at all, you need to get rid of it and paint over it? Or, you know, how do you handle right. that? Right, so uh, there's some things to do and not to do as, as relates to lead-based paint. Okay. Usually on the inside of your house, you're not going to have peeling paint. So it's going to be really hard. You're going to have to actually scrape that stuff off to put it on your salad. Okay. That, that's that's going to be very difficult to do. Usually it's on the exterior where you're going to get peeling paint. Okay. So um, you'll want to make sure when it starts to peel. And you can actually go to uh, places like Home Depot and Lowe's. And for 10 bucks, you can get a lead-based paint tester. And you just pull off one of those... Um, uh, samples of paint that's coming off mm -hmm. and you get it wet there's a salt in the mass and you mix those together and you put it on the paint and uh, red or pink means lead and if it's orange then you're good and if you're colorblind then then go ask somebody else <laughs> Sorry. Um, okay so assuming you find lead-based paint on the inside or the outside of your house uh -huh. At what point do you call in a professional or is this something that's super easy to handle on your own? I mean, a concern of mine would be you're scraping stuff off, it gets into the soil or like tiny particles, you breathe them in. I mean, is right. that a possibility? Uh, yes, it's a possibility. So if I breathe them in again, you know, I'm, I'm not going to be transferring that lead to any children if I ingest sure. the stuff. Sure. You might be. That's true. Um, so what you're going to do is at, at 
at least you're going to want to use a dust filter. Okay. And if you really want to go after it big time, then you use one of those um, full face masks with a screw in cartridge. Oh, okay. Or better yet, you just stay away and let your husband do it. I'm fine with that. Yeah. I'm surprisingly fine with that plan. And, you know, homeowners, this is something that a homeowner can do. Okay. Um, basically, what you're going to do is scrape that off. Make sure it doesn't land in the soil so your children don't eat that and the soil. Or is it harmful to animals, too? You know, I've had a lot of dogs, and I don't think they could get more brain damage. <laughs> So we're not worried about the animals, just the kids. Got it. Okay. Brain damage in a dog. <laughs> you, um, you're going to scrape that stuff off, capture it so it doesn't end up in the soil. Okay. Uh, what you don't want to do is, for example, sandblast the stuff. Oh. You know, okay. if you're like, I really want to get all this paint off, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna use a nuclear bomb. Uh, now we're blowing that stuff all over the place. It's gonna land in the soil. It's gonna be in the air. Everybody's gonna be yeah, and uh, that's what not to do. Okay, so so I don't know a whole lot about sandblasting, but I I know that my mom used a uh, power washer. Is that the same thing? Similar. Okay, and those is that's also a no no for lead based paint. I'm gonna say that's much less of a problem, okay. and in that it's not going to cause the stuff to go airborne because a pressure washer is using water, where a sandblaster is using sand. Okay. Um, anyway, you don't want to get that stuff into the, into the air. Okay. And you definitely, and so that's not going to happen with a pressure washer, but uh, if you are using one of those things, you are going to be washing that stuff all over into the soil. Okay, that's Not true. what you want to do. Okay. So I, does that mean you're stuck with a little hand scraper the whole Pretty time? Pretty much. That sounds fun. Um, and then once you've scraped off what will come off, then you're just going to repaint it. And, and is it necessary to scrape it off first, or can you just paint over it? I mean, is there if, a downside to that, other than it might look tacky? Well, you, your motivations as the homeowner are to uh, get it so that it's not going to be falling into the soil and being ingested by boo-boo. Boo. <laughs> She's going to love this. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so if you just paint over it, it's, it's going to continue to spall off and then be in the soil complete with the fresh paint of coat. Pa so paint of coat. Coat of paint that you're just... I like paint of coat. Yes. <laughs> For the winter time. Could leave uh, that in and it'd probably make sense to everyone. Uh, but yeah, you, you just don't want your new paint job to suddenly look bad next week. Well, and I guess in, in the spirit of saving money you don't spend and time you don't spend all the time scraping it off and you don't you know get the little scraper tool and go through all that but then however long it takes later all of a sudden you're going to have the exact same problem paint does not last forever especially on the exterior of a home right and that's kind of a band-aid cure that's a little bit of a half-hearted approach to yeah um the difficulty is that a healthy coat of paint, you can't get that off. Unless you're using the sandblaster and we don't want to do that. Fair enough. So, uh, yeah, all we're up to, all, all we're left with is, is the Band-Aid approach where we're, we're repainting again. Okay. So, um, that's why a homeowner can do it. Now, if you decided that you wanted to go into the lead-based paint remediation business, Probably not, but continue. You would buy a scraper and a and painting equipment. Okay. So as a homeowner, mm -hmm. scraper and painting equipment, just be careful that it doesn't get in the soil. Make sure you're wearing a mask. Um, make sure that your husband does it. <laughs> so that's right. So that you don't have to. No. Honey, I can't. I think I might be pregnant. Garth said not to, so <laughs> it's on the video. It's basically like doctor, doctor's orders. I yeah. can't do it. You're like a home doctor, so. Yeah. Well, you know, I am a medic. At least I play one on TV. <laughs> okay, so that, that brings a little more understanding, you know, to me as a homeowner. So, um, it's not dangerous unless it starts flaking or peeling. Yeah, and I wouldn't even use the word dangerous. Um, it, as I'm as I'm doing inspections with um, with my clients, if they look like you, then the word dangerous may kind of sort of apply, as long as you don't need it. If you're dealing with two elderly people or two people that look like me, 
just kind of the same thing. Um, then there, you know, unless they've got grandkids coming over who are going to eat that, there's really no safety issue. Okay. But that helps me go, okay, so as a potential home buyer, mm -hmm. and I hear that the home is per uh, built in the thirties, mm -hmm. I can probably assume that any exterior paint and possibly some of the interior paint is lead based. Yes, that is a fair statement. You can, and that's what, uh, I do, and that's what a lot of realtors do uh, with their clients, is just say, hey, you know, this home was built prior to 78. You should just understand that it's going to have lead-based paint. Okay. And um, the, the psychology of that changes everything, because with a home buyer, uh, if you find out, what's the word, if, if you get news that a home has lead-based paint, then it's like, oh my gosh, we can't live here. If you're forewarned, that it's probably going to have lead-based paint and you find out that it does and it's like, oh, my realtor knew what she was talking about. Yeah, you know, that's true. The, the, uh, the psychology is very different. That's true and I would definitely want to know going in mm -hmm. because whether or not it's dangerous, mm -hmm. I would still want to know so that I can be prepared. Right. So that if it does start flaking at any point, I can go, okay, I know how to fix this. It's paint time. I know how to handle this. Right. Because. I was, I was prepared. And that's why you are super mom. Because <laughs> I have this handled. <laughs> yes, you do. I have it handled. So, okay, so we know now lead can potentially be dangerous, but mm -hmm. you don't have to necessarily be terrified of lead-based paint. Right. Because unless you start getting it into the air, into the soil, um, if you're kids start eating it, then you know that, okay, it could be a problem. You should probably take them to the doctor. But other than that, if you're ever unsure, Home Depot or Lowe's probably mm -hmm. has those testers. Mm -hmm. That's how you can... Or you can get them safe. online. You can get them... Um, there's a... a it, it's the Air Check brand that I use. Okay. It's about the size and shape of a cigarette. Um, you can go there, you can go to Amazon, there's a number of places you can go and get those. Okay. Would it be possible to include your preferred brand, like a link after sure. the video? That yeah, would be, we'll, if you have any preferred brands for anything. We'll provide a link with, okay. with this video. That's that's a good plan. I know. Okay. Chalk it up to super mom. So you are super momized <laughs> in the category of lead-based paint. Thank you very much, Holly. You're welcome.